It was here at the Union Buildings in Pretoria nearly 60 years ago that courageous South African women laid the foundation for the freedoms we enjoy today. How devastated they must be that while our rights are now protected by law, they are violated behind closed doors. This is Checkpoint, and I'm Ngebile Mabuse. They marched in their thousands to protest against racist past laws designed to limit their freedoms. The year was 1956. You strike a woman, they warned then Prime Minister J.G. Stradom, you strike a rock. Today, women are literally being struck daily in their homes. Uh, that's it guys catch me again on uh, monday actually i'll be back again on the radio between uh, 9 and 12 for another smashing edition of uh, the morning chat my name's uh, he was one of soweto's most popular community radio station djs here he's wrapping up yet another successful show 37 year old donald sabalai wasn't supposed to be at work that saturday morning in june on saturday one of the person who does the show there could not make it because he was you know gravely ill and Donald was called, you know, in the morning and said, can you come and sit in, you know, and he jumped to that, you know, that's the kind of a person that he'd never say no. My name is R.S. Fulos, Vosmusi, Donald, Mutang, Wakasibolai. DJ Donald Duck, as he was known, never returned to the studio. Instead, his boss woke up to the shocking message the next morning. Like in the morning, bye, chief, you never see me again. Okay, so I said, we are a guy, like, where are you going? He uh, said, Chief, I did uh, And then he said, don't want to spoil your brand. And then I said, no, something is wrong. And I left him. I didn't want to respond. I said, okay, maybe he's just had too much last night. Yeah. Then I said, what now? You know, he said, she's dead. I said, who? He said, Dolly. Dolly Shabalala was a psychology student at Wits University. She also did part-time work there as a receptionist. She was married to Temba Shabalala and they had a daughter together. But in 2013, they separated and Dolly went back home to live with her mother. <laughs> Also, you will create each and every body was witty and ever smiling. Dolly was the apple of her mother's eye. She'd helped renovate her humble childhood home in Soweto, was passionate about education, and had her own car. In fact, she seemed to have it all, including a popular boyfriend, DJ Donald Duck Sabalai. But on Sunday, June the 29th, 32-year-old Dolly was found dead at Jabulani View Flats in Soweto, Donald Sabalai's apartment. When police arrived on the scene, her body was on the bed, covered with blankets. She had been stabbed in her genital area. According to an autopsy report presented in court, the wound was so deep it penetrated her femoral artery in her right thigh. Police believe that after the brutal killing, her attacker drew the curtains, cleaned up the crime scene, locked the door and fled in the victim's car. On her way home from church, Mrs. Marawa received the shocking news of her daughter's death. <laughs> 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 
McDonald was immediately named the prime suspect. Late that fateful Sunday morning, police discovered a further clue that linked him to the crime. Dolly's white Fiat Palio was found in the felt just two kilometers from the scene of the killing, Donald Sabalai's flat. Discarded on the back seat of the car was a blood-stained steak knife, as well as his clothes. Police were here looking for Donald. Then I saw this is really serious, you know. And then I called him, I said, we need to talk. I said, yeah, we need to talk. You know, I'm hearing things, uh, and is it true what I'm hearing? You know, I said, hey, chief, we need to talk. And I said, fine, we'll talk. Uh, let's meet at the office. Donald agreed, says Mpo, but never pitched. His phone was later switched off. As the manhunt and media attention intensified, police offered a 50,000 rand reward for information leading to Sibali's arrest. For nine days, he remained on the run. He was finally apprehended near Main Road in Soweto. During his bail application, Donald blamed everything on Dolly. He said she tried to stab him during an argument and that he'd grabbed the knife in self-defense. He testified that he'd suddenly found himself in a pool of blood. When probed further by the magistrate, he refused to elaborate. Bail was denied. You know, we cannot afford to be entertained into the negative all the time. Prior to Dolly's death, it appeared that Donald had been in the process of altering his public image. He changed his name from DJ Donald Duck to Papa Neo, or father of Neo, his firstborn son. He also took up women's causes. He bring people, you know, women who've done so many things, who were either raped and will come up and say, look, I, came, I come from this background, this is where I am, this is where I am going right now. So people were encouraged, so they felt that he would, they were always looking forward to the show. He also hosted a popular gospel show. But after his arrest, a different picture of Donald Sibali began to emerge. An ex-girlfriend and mother of one of his three children alleged violence and abuse at the hands of Papa Neo. She told Sunday World that he often accused her of cheating and had even beaten her up in public. She also told the newspaper that when she heard that Donald was on the run, she became so scared, she went into hiding. It still sounds foreign to me. I'm not saying he didn't do it, you know, because I don't think someone would just make up lies like that. But I think because we, with, with me or with, you know, here at work, he'd never shown that, you know, he was as professional as, as, as possible. He, he never showed any signs that he was violent. It's now up to the courts to determine who the real Donald Sabalai is a caring father and doting lover, or a furtive killer oozing with charm. Whatever the verdict, Dolly's mother has already made up her mind. At Dolly's grave, Ngele Marawa prays for forgiveness and expresses regret that she wasn't there to protect her one and only daughter. Research conducted in South Africa has revealed that every eight hours a woman is killed by her intimate partner and married women living with boyfriends are at higher risk and the murders usually occur after a quarrel. Professor Rachel Jukes of the Medical Research Council led that study. She says they found a distinct pattern in men who had committed intimate femicide. Men who kill very often have had extremely traumatic experiences in childhood themselves. Very, very harsh childhoods where they've often been subject to what really amounts to quite severe cruelty from a caregiver, which may be a parent. Um, and this has had a tremendous impact on their psyche as they 
develop and makes such people, men more impulsive, less remorseful, uh, more fragile in their self-esteem, if you like, and so intent on maintaining control. You know, at the immediate point where women are killed, very often it's about um, men feeling that they've lost control over women. So, for example, the time of greatest risk of being killed is when women are trying to leave relationships. By all accounts, in the case of Donald and Dolly, there'd be no indication that the relationship was in trouble. Duke says her research found that not all men who kill their intimate partners have violent histories. But our research shows that the great majority of men who kill have previously been violent towards women. There are some men who don't have that. And that obviously is a harder group of men to identify. But our research suggests that very often they are men who are very controlling in other ways. Some men start controlling women and women look at it and they say, oh, he wants to know where I am all the time because he loves me. Experts like Jukes believe authorities need to make better use of research so that a more coordinated approach can be developed. We know there are some interventions we can do with women that are helpful, but the big interventions around how men see themselves as men and their views on gender hierarchy, legitimization of the use of violence, um, perceived by men, men's mental health, men's alcohol um, consumption. Some of these big um, interventions do need to target men. These multiple reasons often make it extremely difficult to tell killers apart from the ordinary man in the street. There are a lot of people who hold guns and there are a lot of people who get into fights and a lot of people who are controlling and who are extremely patriarchal in their relations towards women and who don't kill them. And so in terms of our ability to predict who are the men who are going to kill their partners, I would say that's an extremely imperfect science. So what we advise women are things like, if you've got a very violent and dangerous boyfriend, at the point when you leave him, don't plan that last meeting where you sit down over a cup of tea and explain to him you don't want him anymore. Just go. I mean, that's one thing. And if possible, go somewhere where he doesn't know where you are. Next, our new Minister of Women is rearing to go. One of the critical issues is to make sure that uh, women can be active and be empowered economically in, 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 in our society. But what is her plan? Our plan in dealing with issues of violence against women is to go out on a massive campaigns so what is the plan? We've had campaigns, we've got the 16 days of no violence against women um, that's been running for years and, and there's no change in the statistics. The convictions have actually gone down. Fewer men are being convicted for killing their intimate partners. Well, we've got to look at the justice system. More after the break. The former Minister of Women, Lulu Tlingwana, came under heavy criticism for her lack of strategy, wasteful expenditure and for running a dysfunctional department. I recently sat down with her replacement, Susan Shabangu, to find out what plans she has in place to reduce the shocking levels of violence against women in South Africa. Minister Susan Shalangu, thank you so very much for giving us your time and congratulations on, on your new appointment. Thank you, thank you, Nkepile. I'd like you to first start by outlining your main objectives as the Minister of Women. One of the critical issues is to make sure that uh, women can be active and be empowered economically in, 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 in our society. And the reason for that, if we're able to make sure that women are properly 
economically empowered, then it will mean also the social side of issues affecting women will be minimized. Because if you empower women economically, then they are able to take care of some of the social challenges which they face as women. Every eight hours, a woman is killed in South Africa by her intimate partner. Do you have a plan in place to address that? Our plan in dealing with issues of violence against women, as you correctly say, that women are killed on a regular basis, it's to go out on a massive campaigns. So what From is the, the plan? We've issues. had campaigns. We've got the 16 days um, of no violence against women um, that's been running for years. And, and there's no change in the statistics. The convictions have actually gone down. Fewer men are being convicted for killing their intimate partners. Well, we've got to look at the justice system. What makes that uh, fewer men are being convicted? And what are the issues? But we must also not forget one of the key issues in that awareness campaign or education, it's also about women. It, women that, know their rights. No, women. But they like, pack their bags and they leave and they get beaten up. No, let or me they, also, they, can, they don't have a place to go. There are some women who are abused in their homes. They want to leave. They know their rights. They know that they shouldn't be taking the abuse, but they've got nowhere to go. Let, let's what, also, what same systems no, do we have in place in South Africa? Let's also move into that space. Before we go to the women who have no place to go, Let's start with the women themselves who are in abusive relationship. I think we saw a recent incident, the Marawa girl. If you read the story, it's a woman who understood everything but continues to stay in an abusive relationship. And I think as women, the first thing we need to do is to try and make sure that we liberate ourselves from abusive relationship instead of accepting that one day it will be fine. That's the first step. But the, I mean, it's the norm in South Africa, isn't it? That's the, that's the norm which is abnormal, which we have to deal with. Because if we can start, say, that for all of us who are very much aware that we need to move out of, or when we get indications and signs of an abusive relationship, we drop it immediately. That's the first step which women, we have to do because it takes our own will, our own self-power in pulling ourselves out of that quagmire of abuse. So what is the plan, Minister? The are you plan going to be going to schools? Are you going, going to schools? We'll be interacting with the various women's organizations. We'll be interacting with churches. We'll be interacting with professional organizations, both men and women. In, in, during August month, we'll be interacting with women judges, which is very, very important. We're going to look at all those issues. One That's of the what issues. your predecessor did, Minister. And I mean, the results are not there to show themselves. So Why what, is it, what is it that we're going to be doing differently? Because clearly the situation not is sure. not changing in South I'm Africa. I'm not sure when you say my predecessor did the same thing. I'm saying we've got to interact not with, with particular sectors, with everybody. It's very, very important. She didn't, she didn't interact with everybody. Is that what you're saying? I can't tell whether she interacted with everybody, but I want to I'm sure you, you have give, an idea now that but, you're in her but, office. But also, you must give me an opportunity, even if she did. Allow me to do it the way I think we can make an impact. Are you aware, Minister, that uh, in South Africa, every single year, there are a thousand new serial rapists that are discovered by the police? New, every single year. Are you aware of that statistic? Well, I haven't gone through the stats of um, crime intelligence, but your police and all those kind of issues. That's the information which we'll have to look at, develop programs which will be able to inform us what are the causes. But why don't we know the causes? How have we been dealing with these situations when we don't know the causes? Isn't there something that was left in some file somewhere to say this is why this happens? Because it's nothing new. It's, it's not a new phenomenon. Well, I must say, Kepile, in this particular society, the society itself influences various programs. What you discover today might not be sufficient for tomorrow. But shouldn't so we, we be conducting research exactly. on an ongoing basis? Exactly. What does the research that has recently been conducted in this ministry say about the rape situation in South Africa? Well, the, the, Why are, are women being raped? In this ministry specifically, 
that research has not been done. Why not? I can't answer that question because I've just come in. What I know is that there's work done by social development, but we're also looking how best do we streamline the work which has been done by social development, learning from what they've done when it comes to the issues of gender-based violence, and learning from them, we're going to put together all that information for us to be able to develop programs which then position this ministry better. But uh, Minister, you've just outlined that you, you will be um, going out on outreach programs, speaking at schools, speaking to men, etc. But we don't know what the causes are. So what are we saying to the men? What are we saying we can't to the say, women if we, we don't know why it's happening? We, we can't say, Kepile, you wait for a research. Because it's it happening helps now. you. Because it to say stop rape I, hasn't I, stopped anybody in South I Africa. I agree with you. But you don't say I'm waiting for research to do my work. Yeah, but we've had we 20 move. years of democracy. Surely the research should have been done. The Medical well, Research the, Council did research that showed that every eight hours a woman is killed by her intimate partner. So we should be conducting such research when it comes to rape and other uh, crimes against women. Uh, Especially uh, because we've got a ministry. We're lucky in South Africa that we have a ministry that actually focuses on looking at women's issues. Well, I must say to you, you are so right. This is a ministry which has been created. This is the second term of that ministry, which has to focus and zoom into those areas. You are right, there are various researches which have been done. 20 years, many, many researches. But as you know, the situation and environment changes too, which we need to respond to it. That's exactly what we're, that's why we are here. Because if everything was done and complete, this ministry would not have been created. I agree it's not enough. One of our responsibilities is to really bring change and make sure that what has been done in the past takes us forward. That's all from us this week. Please do give us your feedback. Our Twitter handle is at checkpoint underscore ENCA. Thanks for watching. I'm Ngepili Mabuse.